This week on Computer World Canada in Conversation, will desktops be irrelevant in three years? Google's John Hurley, he says so. Computer World Canada's Kathleen Lau and Raphael Rufolo argue the point, and we'll introduce you to a very special iPhone app. But first, in last week's speech from the throne, the Harper government vowed to open the doors to more foreign investment in Canada's telecom sector. Network World's Howard Solomon explains. Howard, is the government throwing the door wide open to foreign investors, or are they just opening it a crack with the safety chain on so they can see who's at the door? Well, Dave, we don't quite know yet. Uh, right now, the Telecommunications Act allows foreign organizations to directly control 20% of the voting uh, shares of a telecom operator and then combined with indirect and direct control up to 46%. Right now, the government hasn't really said what it wants to do, how much it wants to increase that. But today I talked to a, a telecom industry analyst, and one of the things he said was foreign organizations are going to want to have operating control of any company they invest in. So the government's going to have to think about that when it changes the regulations. And, and what can they do to change those regulations to accommodate that? Well, the government has several choices. One choice is to simply change the regulations in, in the Telecommunications Act, and then it, they don't have to bring a bill into Parliament to change the Act itself. And that's an advantage in this minority government, which can make things very difficult to get through. That's the simplest way to go about it. That's right. Now, one of the things you have to remember is that over the past seven years, there have been three reports uh, to Parliament. Two were commissioned by the uh, industry minister. One was done by the uh, House Committee on uh, Industry. And they recommended a significant broadening of uh, the uh, regulations, which would mean legislative changes. Now, I think it's significant that Industry Minister Tony Clement told reporters in Ottawa that one of the things that he does want to do is change the Investment Canada Act. Now, that act allows the minister to review uh, uh, acquisitions that are over a particular threshold. He wants to add uh, telecom carriers to that act, that act right now, specifies that the minister can review any acquisition that's over $299 million. So the government could keep it at that level or raise that level. But that's one way to make sure that while it allows for an investment, it doesn't allow complete takeovers. Um, another thing you can do is completely change the, uh, the, the Telecommunications Act. Again, that's not too hard to do. But one of the things that, if the government wants to go that route, it would also have to change the Broadcasting Act. And why does the government want to change these rules? Well, one reason is there are a bunch of new wireless carriers that are about to enter the market. This would help them compete against Bell, Telus, and Rogers. It would help increase competition. The other thing is, Last year, there was a bit of a mess when Industry Canada, which has control over the licenses that it gives new carriers, said that a new entrant, Globalive Wireless, complied with the foreign ownership regulations. The CRTC, the telecom regulator, which has control over the carrier licenses, said it wasn't. Will that attract investment from the, the big international telcos, Vodafone, AT&T, T-Mobile? Well, I'm really doubtful. You know, the same industry analyst that I talked to earlier today said that several years ago, he spoke to Vodafone about whether it was going to invest in Canada. And the executive he spoke to was very, very well informed about the Canadian telecom industry and he said no. And the reason is Canada was just too small for Vodafone. Next up is the desktop dead. Computer World Canada's Kathleen Lau and Raphael Rafolo discuss. 
Well, I'm all for uh, outlandish predictions, but uh, this is getting a little bit ridiculous, I think. Um, this was from uh, Google Ad Sales boss uh, John Hurley at uh, an Irish tech conference last week. And here is, I, I quote him, uh, in three years' time, desktops will be irrelevant. Um, in Japan, most research is done today on smartphones, not PCs. So I think a lot of issues with this, and I'm here with uh, Kathleen to uh, discuss it. Um, my first issue with it is that uh, I think this three-year time frame, it's just, you know, sort of to catch the headlines. Really, desktops will be irrelevant in three years, and of all things, because of smartphones. I mean, smartphones are, you know, way beyond what I expected they would be at this point. But still, uh, the adoption is still relatively low uh, when you think of the grand scheme of things of, of how many people have, have phones out there. Um, the most popular brand of phone is Nokia. Uh, worldwide and by a large margin and you know when you look at Apple uh, penetration uh, rates and, and, and RIM it's really only you know a couple percent when you look at the global mobile market uh, so to say that that is really what's going to wipe out the desktop PC I think is being a little optimistic it's like almost uh, those uh, science fiction movies where they they, they show you the future and uh, you know, time travel is possible, and uh, <laughs> hovercrafts are possible, and I mean, it's supposedly set in like 2015. You know, I, I think they're a little bit optimistic here. I, th I think there is potential for um, organizations to place less importance on the PC, but I don't think that um, Google is quite right here. I don't think it's because of the smartphone. I think we still have some serious issues with the screen form factor of the smartphone to really make it useful for some of these PC apps that we're seeing where companies are just projecting them onto the smartphone uh, device. I don't think it really works just yet. I, I do think there is potential for part of this prediction to come true. I think that it'll come about because, not because of the smartphone, but because of client virtualization. And recently there was a, re a piece of research um, by Gartner, and they were looking at some um, top uh, end user predictions for 2010, and they were saying, well, with the popularity of, of client virtualization, we're seeing companies um, using thin clients, um, placing less importance on the PC, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what machine you're working on. So, so I, but that said, I think three years is a little bit soon for us to see PCs completely disappear um, from organizations, but uh, I think what's interesting is that Gartner also said that part of their prediction is that um, out infrastructure providers will also follow suit, and they will also now start providing outsourced PCs as part of their service. Now, that could be rather interesting, but I think that will probably only work for certain kinds of businesses, and it will probably be a little bit further down the road, not quite in three years. Yeah, and especially going to your point with the virtual, you know, virtual desktop, you know, that brings in a whole new can of worms, or opens up a whole new can of worms in terms of security, in terms of getting these, uh, the, the right people in there to manage all these 10 clients. That's a whole, another story in itself, and that's a whole, you know, five to 10 year time frame, I think, not three years. Uh, but of course, Google has a stake in this. I mean, you know, I think it was maybe last year when they came out with their Chrome OS, and the whole the whole business with the Chrome OS was, you know, you just press the button, and and, and now you're on the internet, and everything is cloud based. And you know, Google has a huge bet on this, so you know, of course, they're going to want to make a claim like this. But you know, I mean, I think they're getting a little bit ahead of themselves, um, and they're not the only vendor, obviously, that's ever gotten ahead of themselves. So uh, it just was fun to, I think, poke fun at uh, at the the statement and. Uh, I guess we'll see how it plays out in three years. We probably won't even remember this. Well, but you know, I don't know. I mean, it could. It's interesting because uh, Gartner was also mentioning that there are some companies that have gone as far as to make it a job requirement to to bring your own PC into work or bring your own computer, be it a laptop or what have you. So, so obviously, some companies are taking that route, and they're obviously smaller companies. I don't see enterprises quite making this prediction happen just yet. And as you said, there are lots of issues around security and what have you. And I think organizations have a long way to still centralize their IT in the back end with all of the issues we talked about. Well, I guess the one thing we can both agree on is that uh, desktops will be relevant uh, in three years' time. Moving on, um, Ocean uh, House Media, uh, for the first time ever, are making available Dr. Seuss uh, books, um, complete with illustrations, uh, electronically. Uh, we're going to send it off to uh, Dave Webb uh, to give his take. A Kindle is fine if you're older than me. But what if you're only a child of three? Just text on a background will never amuse, a demographic raised upon Dr. Seuss. Bright colors and pictures and nonsensical talk are what tots are after. Oh, how that would rock. Ocean House Media has taken Seuss titles 
an anthem for iPhone, electronic T. Geisel, a read-along voiceover, and word recognition are certainly to hold the most flighty attention. There's no Kindle or Spindle or from Amazon that could hold half a candle to the cat in the hat. Alas, nothing's perfect, and this has flaws too. Of all the Seuss titles, they have only two.